Welcome to Juris Destiny Academy, the podcast where law school entrepreneurs learn the potentials of how to tap into their divine destiny. Get ready, because court class is in session. Court class is in session. I apologize for being late. My exigent circumstances, but today we're going to be talking about influence in America. Some of the people that I think um, have held the most influence in American history. Um, Let's start with some of the most widely respected. The first person I want that this court class is going to look at is none other than John D. Rockefeller. Okay, he founded Standard Oil. No doubt he probably had uh, eventually developed partnerships with some of the some of the biggest names. Some that we probably don't know too much about today, but maybe you know, maybe in the twenty first century when I was a kid, I studied about it. John D. Rockefeller. Well-respected man. He sent his kids to regular schools. Put them in hand-me-down clothes. But at the same time, even though they lived in a a nice mansion and everything, he was always giving to his church. Always. He's a Baptist. Old Baptist boy. And he gave so much. To think about it. Back then, people were using dirty kerosene. And he's like, you know, let's let's modify this. Let's find a way to to clean it up and manufacture it in a better way to heat our homes and eventually to fuel our cars. (laughs) Even formed a partnership with Henry Ford to do so. Now, please hear me out. Some people, I think, stand oh, all the the big oil companies are bad. Not necessarily. Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump say that oil is part of the lifeblood of the economy. Just like entrepreneurship is. And so, John D. Rockefeller... He did his best to put his imprint on the world. He was not really that much of a social person, but he was friendly enough. Um, A lot of the social events he went to, I think, was through his his church. Very devout man. I mean, yet some people in the reactive culture would say that he's evil. No, he's not. He's not. He he leaves his impact on, on the world around us because when he began in the, the possibly the, the late nineteenth and early part of the twentieth century, because of how well he was refining his his kerosene to to and, and a cleaner oil. He would end up controlling 90% of the nation's refined oil. I mean, you think standard oil? You think about oil for cars and, you know, the the ships, you know, in some ways, you know, offshore drilling and the like. John D. Rockefeller was a good man. He wasn't this mean, stingy capitalist. Shoot his own kids. He made his own kids learn uh, certain skills and take jobs and stuff and humble themselves before they could just, you know, inherit his fortune. You can't blame him for that. You know, it goes along with the economy, you know, 
give a give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. It's kind of a biblical thing. And I agree with that. And that was the philosophy of John D. Rockefeller. And I hope that this helps you. Now, the final analysis, we're going to look at a second person. And you all know about him. More textbooks. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Born into humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. You, you, can't, you can't deny that. He was born into humble beginnings. And because he was born into humble beginnings, farm life and everything. But once he grew of age, came of age, he realized he wanted more for himself. So he took off for the city of uh, Springfield, Illinois. Um, he worked, I think, building log cabins during the day. Studied law at night. Became an accomplished lawyer. Married Mary Todd. Tried to craft his way into politics. It wasn't easy. Um, by the 1840s, he was just a buck private for what was the one-day Black Hawk War. Didn't seem to carry that much influence. Was elected to Congress for one term. Lost the second term. Ran for the Senate and lost. Then in 1860, he ran for and won the presidency of the United States. But I, I got to say, that is not without challenge for Abraham Lincoln. That is not without challenge for Abraham Lincoln. And so to that end, to that end, <laughs> Abe Lincoln, I have no doubt that he suffered from depression. Possibly even bipolar depression. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know how far along uh, psychiatry was at that point in the 19th century. Probably not by much. But based on reading his story, I could see some elements of a mental illness, but he wrote about that because he was a tower of a man. Court class adjourned. Next time we will talk about the law of process. We're probably going to spend a considerable amount of time with it. Court class adjourned. Now, I hope you enjoy listening to Juris Destiny Academy. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the Juris Destiny Academy family. Uh, this is uh, Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time, take care and tap into your God-given destiny.